In this question, our first task will be to convert the speed from kilometers per hour into a standard unit of meters per second. So the question says that the speed is 290 kilometers per hour. You can put the kilometers over one hour. This will help us convert it into meters per second. Now perhaps we all know that one kilometer is equivalent to 1,000 meters. And you notice that we set up the conversion factor in this way so that when we multiply, the kilometers will cancel, leaving us with meters. We may also know that one hour is equivalent to 3,600 seconds. And again, if we set up the conversion factor in that manner, the hours will cancel. And the final unit will be meters per second. So let's pick up our calculators and type in this conversion. And when you do so, you should get about 80.6 meters per second. So this would be the initial speed. Next, let's take a look at the information that we know in the x direction. Now we know that the object that the plane is releasing begins up here at this point. And hopefully we can tell that if we superimpose a y-axis and an x-axis in this manner, that the initial x coordinate would be zero meters. So we can write x naught is equal to zero meters. But then when the package hits the ground over here, we can see that the final x coordinate would simply be the length of d, and that is given as 700 meters. So we can write down that x, which is the final x coordinate, is 700 meters. Also, we note that the package is dropped at an angle. The angle is stated as 30 degrees, but notice it's below the horizontal. Since it's measured below the horizontal, in fact, we have to make that angle negative because any angle that is measured in a clockwise fashion must be assigned a negative sign. So we can say that that initial angle that the object is released at is negative 30 degrees. Now, that actually is enough information using this equation from projectile motion to calculate the time. So we can come down here and rewrite that equation. x minus x naught equals, and then if we scroll back up a bit, v naught cos theta naught times t. v naught cosine theta naught times t. So let's fill in the information that we listed above. Again, the final x coordinate is 700 meters minus the initial is 0 meters equals, now remember, the initial velocity, the magnitude of the initial velocity was 80.6 meters per second. So we'll say that right here. Multiplied by the cosine of negative 30 degrees and then times time. Now the left side obviously becomes 700 meters. You would pick up your calculator and type in 80.6 times the cosine of negative 30 degrees and you end up with about 69.76 meters per second, and that quantity is multiplied by the time. So now we can actually solve for the amount of time the package is in the air by dividing both sides by the 69.76 meters per second so that it cancels out on the right-hand side. The left-hand side becomes 10.0 seconds approximately. So the package is in the air for 10 seconds, and this is the correct answer to part A. Now, we'll move back up and see what was going on in part B. The question wanted to know how high was the release point. So looking back at the diagram, we can see that the package was dropped from a certain height, and that would actually be the initial y coordinate. So we're going to write down y naught equals question mark, because that initial y coordinate is what we're looking for. It's basically the height of the release point. Now when the package strikes the ground over here, that would mean that the final y coordinate is simply zero meters. So we know that much information. Again, we know the initial speed as well as the angle. We also know that in the vertical or y direction that the acceleration of the object would be equal to the magnitude of gravity. So we're going to say that the acceleration is equal to g, which you recall is 9.8 meters per second squared. Now, technically, the acceleration is negative because gravity is pulling down, but there is a negative sign built into the formula for projectile motion. So we're just going to be ending up plugging in 9.8 
because the negative sign is already included in the formula. And indeed, it is this second formula that we will be using. And so we have the final y-coordinate minus the initial y-coordinate equals the initial speed times the sine of the angle multiplied by time minus one-half g times squared. Now again, the final y-coordinate is zero. The initial, we don't know. The initial speed was 80.56 meters per second times the sine of negative 30 degrees times the time of 10 seconds, which we found earlier, minus one-half times 9.8 meters per second squared times 10 seconds squared. Go ahead and type in the entire right-hand side of the equation into your calculator carefully. And when you do so, you should end up with about negative 893, approximately. This will come out in meters because the seconds here and the seconds there would cancel. And then the seconds squared and the seconds squared there will cancel. The left side is just negative y naught. So if you divide both sides by negative 1, you get the initial y coordinate of about 893 meters. So this would be the initial height that the package was released from and the correct answer to part B.